Today we're talking about the Leo moon, its emotional responses and needs. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Nina. I am a Western tropical astrologer and certified life coach. To book a reading or session with me, you can go to ninabastrology.com. Today we are continuing on with the moon series with the Leo moon. I'm going to get all into the nitty gritty of what the Leo moon represents in terms of emotional responses, reactions, emotional needs, nerves, but this is still a general placement video just talking about the Leo moon in general. There's so much more that makes up your Leo moon, including aspects, which is why I have a aspects to the moon video that you can check out here. But of course, to get the most personalized look at your moon, you can book a reading with me at ninabeastrology.com. Leo moon is an interesting one. Leo is ruled by the sun. So as with all things that are in Leo, the way that the Leo moon plays out in a person's chart has a lot to do with their sun placement, their sense of self and their ego expression as well. Because Leo is ruled by the sun, it's also not necessarily the most intuitive position for the moon to be in. When we look at Leo's relationship with other signs, we see that it is square Taurus, which is the exalted placement of the moon, but it's also square Scorpio, which is the debilitated placement for the moon. The other prominent aspect that it has two signs that fall into categories of exalted, detriment, debilitated, etc., is that it is in conjunct Capricorn, which is the moon in its detriment. So though it's not in stride with the energy of Taurus, which is the healthiest position for the moon, it also doesn't fall into the traps of the signs that struggle more in the position of the moon because it doesn't have much to do with the characteristics of those signs, Capricorn and Scorpio. Leo is a very expressive sign. So that's where you see it not falling into those traps of the moon and its detriment, Capricorn, of being so emotionally shut off that there's difficulty in tapping into one's needs. The Leo moon indicates an ability to be very in tune with one's needs and to act very naturally and inherently like themselves and emote from a very authentic place. And that's really the, the key word is authentic. People with Leo moons react emotionally and express emotionally from a very authentic place. It's easy to label the Leo moon as in general more extroverted or more ostentatious, theatrical, all of these things that we associate with Leo. But at the core of it, the sign of Leo is about authentic self-expression. And so whether someone with a Leo moon is going to be more theatrical, more extravagant, has more to do with whether that is in line with their sun sign, with their ego expression, with their sun placement in general. Is it authentic for a Leo moon based on their sun placement to go out there and be theatrical and ostentatious and grab attention with the way that they emotionally react? Or is it authentic to the Leo moon based on their sun placement to be more shy, stick more to themselves, but definitely not put up a front or be necessarily very people pleasing with the way that they go about getting their needs met and emotionally expressing themselves. I tend to see that when people come to me and say that they don't really relate to their Leo characteristics, they're more so not relating to this very pigeonholed stereotype of Leo being loud and extravagant and whatnot, or extroverted and social. And the fact is that Leo is not necessarily actually very social. If anything, it's the special type of antisocial, not in a wallflower sort of sense, but when we approach the word antisocial as pro-self, 
you know, pro what I'm going to do, how I want to express myself, how I feel versus socially accommodating, socially placating, socially performing, then you see Leo as very anti-social because what it's concerned with is tending to the self. This is also how we see that Leo Moon doesn't fall into the trappings of the debilitated Moon in Scorpio. The moon in Scorpio is very sensitive to how other people make them feel and can have a rooted sense of insecurity. Like they can't rely on their needs being met, on general safety being provided for them. The Leo moon is typically not so concerned with those outside factors, with how emotional stimulus from other people affects their space. The Leo moon actually is typically not going to look for their needs being met primarily from other people. The Leo moon can have this attitude of wanting to be very self-sustaining when it comes to their needs, servicing themselves and their own needs, and perhaps not being so in tune with providing for the needs of others either. And that whole thing leads right into the typical image that you get of the mother of a person with a Leo moon. The moon has a lot to do with how our mothers mothered us. And the sign that our moon is in can have a lot to do with how we in our development saw our mother as a mother figure. To have a Leo moon can be an indication that you saw your mother as quite self-sustaining, as very passionate, unbridled, perhaps even with the way that she expressed her own emotions, authentic to the ends of the earth, not socially placating, fully preoccupied with her own emotions and an authentic expression of those. And that can send several messages to the Leo moon as a child. That sort of behavior would have become a model for the Leo moon to act in that same way, for them to be unbridled, extravagant, authentic with the way that they express their own emotions. They might have not gotten the lesson to placate socially, to bridle their temperament in order to make room for the needs of others or the comfort of others or whatnot. But it also could have very much sent this message of them feeling like their needs and their emotions took a back seat to the needs and emotions of their mother. They might have felt somewhat neglected and felt this need to be self-sustaining with the way that they provided their own emotional safety. And even their own bonding needs could have gone neglected. And this can be an area of difficulty for the Leo moon, this part of the moon that represents empathic connection, compassion, and that face-to-face -face bonding of being vulnerable and opening up your needs to be met to someone else. It can be quite a lonely position to have a Leo moon. And this might not be something that is immediately apparent with the Leo moon because there is a trade-off in that experience still of a great amount of joy of, okay, I wasn't given the face-to-face -face bonding time, that intimacy, that connection with my mother to really feel like my needs were met and my feelings were known. But what she did teach me was to always freely express myself and express my emotions. And so depending on what that looks like for a Leo moon, these can be very fun, joyous, silly, rambunctious people who are not afraid to put themselves on display, who are not afraid to have fun and be authentic. And it can be a really infectious kind of energy. But at the end of the day, when you get to know these people deeply, 
you might find that that isn't something that they're used to. They're not used to actually having people look deeper into them and get to know that inner wounded lonely self. When you look at the disparity between the sign of Leo and the sign of Taurus, which is the exalted placement for the moon, like I said, you see where characteristics of the Leo moon can really fall short of being a fully healthy placement. And that is in emotional regulation. That's what the Taurus moon really has going for it, is the steadfastness with the way that it experiences emotions. And also the sense of boundaries, of being able to maintain their own sense of peace and provide for themselves. Leo moon might have had that same experience of having to provide for itself, but they weren't necessarily gently led down that path of providing for themselves. It might have been more so born out of a default, a neglect. And because of that, when it comes to putting up boundaries to protect one's peace for the Leo moon, they don't consciously know how to put up those boundaries and can instead become overwhelmed when they sense that other people are trying to make their emotions the Leo Moon's problem. Because in their experience, that might have been what sharing and compassion was set up as, instead of an opportunity to connect and create intimacy, it was one person making their emotions another person's problem. Because potentially in their relationship with their mother, their mother's own emotional needs and responses took precedence over their needs as a child being met by the mother. And Leo also, as a sign, is generally much more expressive and forthcoming and passionate than Taurus is as a sign. So when it comes to how emotions get expressed, there's less of this even-keeled, slowly processing of stimulus and then casually sort of reacting to it in a measured way and there's more of this immediate call to action that they feel when they get emotionally impressed upon. This is not the rosy picture that you typically hear when you hear people talk about Leo placements. What I'm describing here is truly as detrimental as a Leo moon can get. So it is important to note that there are other things that can combat the most difficult aspects of this manifestation in your chart. And also there is more to the Leo moon than just this sense of needing to cope on its own and feeling like they didn't have that opportunity for intimacy and bonding with their mother. In fact, the expression of the Leo moon shows a lot of resilience in the face of those facts. Because, like I said, it is not going to go down the Capricorn moon route of becoming emotionally shut down and unresponsive to their own needs. Leo moon learns how to cope very well with entertaining itself, with providing itself joy and emotional fulfillment and satisfaction because what the Leo moon has at the root of it, no matter what, is that they know themselves. They have themselves. They can count on themselves and they can get themselves through anything, whether it is just entertaining themselves whether it is being able to provide that sense of nurture and comfort for themselves. They might even not necessarily feel like they're missing out on much of that intimacy and social connection because they have found a way to cope very well with dealing with their own emotions and needs, expressing them authentically, and enjoying their own company, like I said, entertaining themselves. This is also all very different 
from what you typically hear of the Leo moon as being out there and attention seeking and whatnot, it still can be the case. Although I in general take issue with the blanket notion that Leo as a sign is attention seeking. I think at the end of the day, you might interpret someone authentically and without limits expressing themselves as being attention seeking. But in my experience and my knowledge of Leo as a sign, it really comes much more from a selfish place of, I don't need you to validate me necessarily. I just want to be me and do that loudly and whatever in how you react to it has very little to do with anything. Unlike the stereotype suggests, a Leo moon can be a very contented introvert can actually not be super comfortable with too much intimacy, with an abundance of social relationships, because they value the relationship with themselves so much because they learned to cope with themselves first and foremost and to provide their own needs themselves first and foremost. And so they might actually require quite a bit of alone time to refill their cup and feel like their needs are getting met because their emotional ecosystem is set up in such a way where they feel like they are the only ones who are able to provide that sense of emotional security and safety and peace for themselves. And so if they're not checking in with themselves and not providing themselves their own nurture, then they are going to feel frustrated with having to put themselves out there with an empty cup. And what's different also with the Leo moon, as opposed to other Leo placements, is that the moon is something that we only really reveal in intimate situations. And so from an outside looking in, you can see a Leo moon and you can be like, I don't understand how this person is Leo anything <laughs> because they are not loud and expressive and whatnot, but their relationship with themselves is going to be where they let out more of that Leo energy of being unbridled and authentic. Their relationship with whomever they find uh, an ability to intimately and vulnerably connect with is where they're going to be more unbridled and authentic. But the moon is a more private thing, and so it might not be on show. 24 7 to just anyone their own authentic sense of self-expression that's another reason why the leo moon likely needs a lot of alone time because especially if they don't feel like they're in an environment or around people in which they feel safe they are not likely to feel like they can fully be themselves and fully express themselves because they don't have that skill, arguably it's a skill, to manipulate their own emotional expression to be socially acceptable or to placate others, to serve others' needs. Their emotional expression is something that they do for themselves. And if they don't feel like they are fully welcomed somewhere, they're not going to feel like they're able to enact that sense of emotional expression and be themselves. Again, how extroverted versus introverted, how comfortable a Leo moon feels in being themselves has everything to do with their sun placement. So that's just to say, like, don't judge the Leo moon based on its stereotype. There is a version of the Leo moon that is very introverted because they don't feel that sense of safety in being themselves. And so that sense of authentic emotional expression can only come out alone or in very select settings. Or you can find a Leo moon that feels very comfortable with being themselves and therefore are going to be more emotionally expressive with their moon. Theatrical, funny, out there, unabashed, and depending on how strong or predominant a person's ego is in their charts will also dictate how selfish 
a Leo moon is when it comes to dealing with the emotions of others. If they're going to act more out of this space of you're making your emotions my problem and I can't handle that and I'm going to take up all of this space and I'm going to be expressive and loud and make sure that my needs take precedent over your needs and that my emotions and how I feel about things are going to take precedent over how I'm affecting you with my actions or behaviors or whether a Leo moon is going to be more shut down and incapable of opening themselves up because of that discomfort with creating intimacy and that impulse to just take care of themselves and deal with their own stuff instead of letting in the emotional stimulus of others because no matter what way you slice it, that's likely going to be somewhat overwhelming to a Leo moon. And whether it's that very loud expression of I'm here and it's about me or it's that very quiet expression of I'm shutting down, I can't participate in this, I'm going to go back to my little introverted corner and find my self-soothing techniques and whatnot. It all comes from, at the core, a difficulty with that intimacy, which likely be tied back to the mother and how the mother or mother figure in a person's life didn't foster that intimacy. And that also can all be tied back to the poetry of how the sun is the sun and the moon is the moon. And so with Leo being ruled by the sun, the moon in Leo doesn't really make a lot of sense. The sun is about the self, is about the ego, the moon is about intimacy. So there is a struggle in putting those two together and having the moon and Leo really be very lunar and really step up to the plate to those moon duties, if you will, <laughs> in a person's chart. But I do want to emphasize that this isn't a moon in its detriment. It isn't a moon in its debilitation because at the end of the day, the moon in Leo has some very robust skills in being able to take care of itself, provide itself this joyful kind of emotional self-soothing, enjoying its own company, and really providing for itself instead of feeling alone and shutting down. And these can be very fun, theatrical, enjoyable people to be around. Just the next time that you interact with the moon in Leo and you jump to assumptions based on Leo stereotypes. Consider maybe that this person is missing out on having relationships in which people truly want to get to know them on an intimate level and see past their theatrics potentially. So that is the moon in Leo. That's all that I have for you for today. Again, if you want more info on your moon in Leo, how it's interacting with the rest of your chart. You can book a reading with me at ninabeastrology.com. You can subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with this moon series. I also have a Venus aspect series going on and I'm always posting every week about astrology, spirituality, all that jazz. And you can also subscribe to my newsletter at ninabeastrology.com slash newsletter to stay up to date with all things related to Nina B. Astrology, the cosmos, and sometimes just chit-chatting about life. The, the Nina B. and not the Nina B. Astrology LLC. You know what I mean? <laughs> but once again, thank you for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day or night and that I get to speak to you again very, very soon in one way or another. Bye.